So we got gifted a deer hide. Uh, we posted on our local um, forum thing. Uh, if anybody, since it's deer season, if anybody you know bags a deer, we'd like the hide because a lot of hunters throw away the hide. Surprisingly, uh, it's a lot of work to brain tan them. You could chemical tan them, I guess, but even that's a lot of work. Don't chemical tan. <laughs> But even that's a lot of work. So a lot of hunters throw away the hides. Um, so we asked if anybody has hides, uh, gift them to us, but we need the head too. Um, so we can use the brain to tan them. So we got this hide about two weeks ago, uh, maybe more, maybe less, I don't know. And we fleshed it first. There was still lots of flesh and meat on the underside of the hide, the opposite side that Shakoi's is working on now. Um, and then we soaked it. Uh, you can soak it for three days if the water, if the temperature outside is pretty warm, but we soaked it in our spring, which is like 45 degrees. And it's been pretty cold outside. So the colder it is, the longer it takes to soak. You want to be able to pull the hair just like that. And every right. time we went, it was like trying to pull it off really hard. You want to be able to just take it and pull it off like that. Right, so soaking it helps, like Shakoi said, it helps the hair slip a little bit more. Um, so you can you can tan uh, you can tan hides with the hair on, but this is our first one, so we're um, just doing it with the hair off because that's the easiest. It takes more time and it's a little bit more labor intensive. And we want to make more usable clothing and medicine bags. Not everything we want it for is going to need the fur. Right. We will do fur eventually, but for now. We but want fur it. fur now. <laughs> yeah, for now we're gonna do it without the hair uh, because also if the brain solution gets on the hair it uh, It'll ruin the hair. Well, it naturally slips itself. Right, so um, the, the step after flushing is uh, Getting the hair and the grain off and you can see Shakoi is getting the hair off, but you see how here's a good That's the grain. Yeah, so you see so I'll go over afterwards very gently I'll get that grain off. Yeah, the grain is where the hair is attached. So this this is the grain. And I and you can see right here, right above my fingernail, is there's a you, you might not be able to see it on the camera, but there's the white and then there's another layer right underneath the white. The white I believe is the epidermis. And then you can see right here, this little streak, it looks a little thinner. Even right here too. So that's what you want to get it down to. You want to get it to just the hide layer. Um, so after we do this, I believe we mix up the brain solution. Well, I'm gonna go into. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna get all this hair off. I'm gonna do another flushing where I get any extra leftover stuff that we didn't get. All the fat and stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, that way, because that will dry and um, become hard. You want it to be soft and pliable. So then we'll brain tan it, and then we'll smoke it, and then we'll stretch it. And that is just when you, you don't literally pull it and stretch it, but you take take a bone or something, and you're going to go over the skin itself, and you're going to make it soft and pliable. And we'll show you that in more detail. All right, so I'm going to let Shakoi do some more of this um, uh, hair de-hairing. <laughs> um, and I'm going to go split some shingles. It's pretty cool because traditionally uh, women did a lot of the hide work in a lot of, well, at least North American indigenous cultures. Uh, women traditionally did a lot of the, the tanning and the hide work. So I'm going to go, Shakoi's doing her um, cultural tradition, and I'm going to go do some of my Northern European cultural tradition and split some shingles uh, for the chicken coop. And Koda's going to do his tradition and sit here and guard us because that's what Akitas like to do. So <laughs> we'll shoot back in a little while, I guess. So while Shakoi is finishing the hide, I'm gonna put up some shingles. Um, I just split a bunch of them, and these ones are all split by hand. Um, I wanna talk for a minute about how, just uh, the whole process of splitting shingles. First, it's super low tech, so we have a fro. Um, I'll go get it and I'll show you real quick. So these are the tools required to split a bunch of cedar shakes. Uh, this is how people did it before um, sawmills were available. And this is how people shingled their houses, uh, mainly roofs. So, um, you know, yeah, these will, these will maybe rot in 75 years on a roof, but uh, it's 
just you know before metal was widely available and asphalt shingles were widely available um, this is what people had to do so this is called a fro and uh, it's a pretty low-tech tool um, it's just a piece of steel with an eye and uh, it's beveled on one side and you have a handle and this is a mallet um, this is cherry wood, so it's not the best wood. Hardwood would be better. Uh, I had a maple one, but it got demolished, which inevitably happens no matter how hard your wood is. This took me all five minutes to make. So uh, that's basically the uh, basically the technology needed to do this. Um, it's pretty cool because this is hyper local material. Um, this came from our swamp. Uh, actually, this came from all of these you know these piles. Uh, the only trouble is finding ideal pieces to use, um, so they should be pretty free of knots um, and straight grain. Uh, although you can see some knots aren't really that big of a deal, you can go right through them. Or they leave little holes, which is cool too. As you can see on there, there's holes all over the place. So these aren't for a roof, so we're not going to worry about holes. Um, and also these will last a lot longer than sawn shingles. So sawn, sawn shingles, since you, uh, you cut through the grain, um, that actually, you know, cedar is rot resistant, but when you split it right down the grain, that actually preserves the cell structure in the wood, uh, which is what makes it so rot resistant. Um, the, the tannins in the cedar, uh, or maybe the oils, something about the, the cell structure in the cedar is what makes it rot resistant. So when you split it down the grain, instead of sawing through the grain, you preserve that structure and it makes it uh, way more rot resistant. So these shingles will probably outlast the chicken coop um, since the chicken coop is sawn lumber and uh, used pretty old chipboard. But since, since it's covered with these shingles, um, it should last quite a long time. So I'm going to start putting up some shakes also what I wanted to talk about too was uh, they look pretty unique which is cool right you know these are uh, like we intentionally did the staggered sort of uh, pattern but they look pretty unique they're not like your typical Home Depot cedar shakes uh, which is definitely one thing that we want to do we don't want it to look um, you know like everybody else's cedar shakes they don't look homogenized they're, they're not all the same uh, width. They're definitely not all the same thickness at the bottom uh, and they're they all have character which is pretty cool. So it's hyper local material, super self-reliant um, ways of putting siding or even roofing up because you can do it yourself if you have cedar or even if you have oak, straight grain clear oak you could do that too. Um, you might even be able to do it out of ash. I don't know how long ash would last but you know straight grain splittable uh, wood is what you're looking for. Cedar is great in the sense that it's incredibly rot resistant. So um, it's hyper local, it's self-reliant way of siding and roofing, and it's also uh, got great character and it's not homogenized. It's not like every every other cedar shake. Um, so it's, you know, it's got character. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put some more up and um, I've got the fro. Well, I don't need the fro, so that'll go right there. I don't need this mallet right now, but I will need some small nails and this. So this is just a rigorous hatchet and I'll use it to hammer the, the shakes up, but also um, things like this. Uh, this one has obviously got a little chip here. Uh, this won't probably won't matter that much because here's the thinner end. So, you know, we'll put it up like that. But some of them are a little uh, tapered one way or another. Um, they're not completely straight on the side, so just to get them to line up better uh, The hatchet part works really well to you know, you can look right down uh, sight it kind of and Straighten out the sides, so I'm gonna get to putting some on and hopefully I can get This backside of the coop shingled How long have you been working on this? I don't know, I haven't really been counting <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. It's an hour or two probably Hours. Look at all that fur. Hopefully some animals will use that as a nest or something. Uh, so you're pretty much done, not pretty much, but almost done. Yeah. With just, uh, just wanted to 
to show you guys the process so far. Um, this is the flesh that I'll be getting off next. You can see you can it's see not it. attractive, obviously, but that's... And then, see, right here is kind of what she's aiming for. Is You know, see these darker spots? Yeah. So, um, after this, we're going to crack open the brain. The head, the brain, the brain. And, um, and then we're going to brain tan it. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> we'll smoke it right here, too. Using punky wood, not actual wood. You want to smoke it. You want to have a smolder. You don't want the flame, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I wanted to show you how simple it is, too, to, once it's been soaking, check this out. It's a nice strip. It's definitely labor-intensive, but it's really something that should be earned. It shouldn't be a snap of your fingers and you get what you want. You should be earning it and spending time with it. Many times doing it, I'm just sitting, I'll sit on the rock right there and just, you know, appreciate what I'm doing and what this animal has given for this. I even see little scars in her hide, which is pretty interesting if it was from brambles or a bad encounter with something. And it's really interesting to see her lifespan. So yeah, here's an update. Evil. Evil, evil, evil. This is proof that ducks are just as good composters as chickens. They go eyes deep. They just use their faces instead of their legs is all. Oh my god. up to beautiful light snow and it's been coming down. Of course the day Michael wants to do the oil so he's changing our oil. Hi. Um, yeah so just homestead happenings. Also, the chickens are loving their coop, even if <laughs> a big duck, even if they fight over spots. So I'm waiting for our oil to drain and um, change the filter. Well, I'm gonna change the filter too because been about a year since we changed our oil which is probably longer than we should have but that's okay um, but I don't have a filter wrench and it was a little hard to get off um, so I wanted to let you guys know that if you don't have a filter wrench you can always use a handy dandy leather belt uh, that helps a lot um, to just loosen the filter and to get it on nice and snug when you want to get it on too so just a little trick I've learned along the way <laughs> 